God gave me this title probably over a month ago, and I, you're going to laugh at me. I've got notebooks. I've got a desktop here in the office. It's got all kinds of titles, but blank pages. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, and so this, this one stayed on my desktop probably for two weeks, maybe three. I kept, okay, God, I know, I know it's a word from you, but what, what's the rest of it? And then this week, I, I felt a release and, okay, this is it. it. But like I said earlier, it's just been crazy. And this is the way the enemy works. But it's been crazy just to get a quiet moment. It's been, because I've been starving God. I know it's a word, what is it? And I, I laughed, I worked on this Wednesday. I left with no peace. I came back in Thursday, between the phone calls and, and things like that, I worked on it Thursday all day. And finally, I was about 5.30, I thought, God, I'm going home and mow my yard. I said, I'm tired, I'm not, I, don't, I don't have peace. I know this is it, but what is it? And so I went home and I love my, they laugh at me, I love my lawnmower time. It's me, my lawnmower and God. And so I'm just like, God's just speaking. And so with that being said, and when you read Ezekiel 37 this morning, and then when they sung, great is our God, we talk about the, the it's his breath in our lungs. It just, it just came together. So the title of the message today is actions speak louder than words. I mean, actions speak louder than words. And when I say that, I, we know this is an, is an, an idiom is what they call them, and it has other meanings, but the title of this came from the book of Acts. More so, the title of Acts, which is the actions of the apostles. And in order for us, for those dry bones to come together, for the church to unite, like it was in, at the birthing, there's, there's some points, some actions, I believe, that we need to revisit. We know them. We go through them. We say them. But I'm talking about, let's just open-heartedly, raw, before God, revisit. And, and this, I'm just going to give you five this morning, pretty much out of Acts 1 and chapter 2. And, and, and I've been trying to read the book of Acts, all 28 chapters now for the last couple months. And I've gotten about chapter 16, I end up back at chapter 1, doing it again. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I just, God's got me stirring in here. So, with that being said this morning, the birthing of the church, the actions of the church, what are some things that that took place then that we need to revisit today. Because we know the church hasn't died. Amen? You've heard it said many times, I've said it, that there's 28 chapters in Acts. It does not end in amen. amen. Right? That's right? And I look at you this morning, and I see Willie Bland. Amen? Jeff, I, I see all, all of you that's very much alive this morning. Amen? Born again. So we know the church is very much alive. And so we're going to jump back in the book of Acts today. We're going to check ourselves. We're going to revisit what the early church was doing and what we need to need an awakening on. Amen? And so with that being said, we're going to start out with action number one in Acts chapter 2, verse 37, 38 is repentance. Repentance. We, that's a word we say a lot. I can say oh me on that, but do we, do we do it? Not just, I can tell you I'm sorry, but in my heart, am I, 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 am I doing it? And so, let's just get in Scripture. Listen, I, thank you, Aaron. I gave Aaron a lot of Scripture for today. And, and listen, you need to hear God's Word more than you need to hear mine. And so, let's just go with it. Acts chapter 2, verse 37 and 38. It says, when the people heard this, they were cut to the heart. And said to Peter and the other apostles, brothers, what shall we do? And Peter, the man of God, the apostle at this time, said, repent and be baptized. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now we realize he's talking here to the unbelievers, right? He's talking to those that are not saved, not have a relationship. So therefore he says, repent and be baptized. But listen, I want to, I want to share, speak to you today with, with us, the church, in comparison to the early church, how we need to repent. And repentance is sincere regret and remorse and turning away from whatever it is that's hindering us and God. And we know that the Scripture tells us in Matthew and Luke that we're to love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. But Luke says it like this, and... 
He doesn't say it's two commandments. He says, and love your neighbor as yourself. Well, listen. Not only do I want to repent for God, what I've done to you, may, maybe it may come in the form of my brother or my sister. Right? I need to repent to you. Make sense? Listen, God, forgive me my sins, and I'm sorry for what I've done. True repentance. Not to bring it up again. Amen? As far as the east is from the west, he forgives us. I need to forgive you. You need to forgive me. Amen? Repentance. Listen, we're going to go through this fast. You know me. I, I, Ten minutes, and now normally I'm done. So this, we're going to go into action number two. So, so listen, I, I'm more concerned about you hearing God's word and then the ministry time, okay? So listen, let, 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 let me read this real quick. Second Chronicles 7, 14 and 15, before we move on to action number two. We, we, we quote this a lot, but it, are we putting it in action? And we're talking, I told you, he, he, Peter said, repent, be baptized for the unbeliever, but for the believer. Listen to this, Second Chronicles 7, 14. If my people, say my people, yeah, if my people, he's talking to you and I, the church, come on, who are called by my name. You've been called. This is, this is something we don't like. Will humble themselves. My God, do we have a problem with humility. He says, and my people will humble themselves and pray. And I love the amp in this. It says, and seek. It means to crave, to require with all necessity. My face. And turn from the wicked ways. The church has wicked ways? Then I will hear. Then I will hear them from heaven and forgive their sins and heal their land. Verse 15, I love this. Now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to the prayers offered up in this place. Somebody say this place. Listen, I'm exp this is for us. I'm coming to you as, God, I'll walk in it as the prophet this morning for a word for this house in this time is we need to humble ourselves. We need to pray. We need to seek. We need to turn from our wicked, evil ways. Because, listen, I need healing. Amen. I want him to hear me. Amen. And it's going to happen in this place. Amen. When we repent, God's ears are opened. How many of you, I'm confessing for me, there's been times I've prayed, and I think, God, they're hitting the ceiling. And I get angry. God, what's going on? And then the Holy Spirit, thank you, Holy Spirit, shows me, you need to repent. Yes, because he's faithful. And if, and if I am the man of God that I say that I am, I hear the voice of my Father. You know what? I don't, I, I, I've said this, and I've repented. God, forgive me for anything that I've done today that I don't remember. That's not true. Because the Holy Spirit lives within me. And when I say, when I do an uh oh, the Holy Spirit says, and I got to take care of it right then. Right? Because if you don't, it festers. And the next thing you know, you're worse than you were. And God's not hearing your prayers. Amen? So, so when the ears, when his ears are opened to a repent of heart, forgiveness takes place, and then he moves on our behalf. Healing then can take place. The miraculous can happen. Amen? So now let's go into action number two. Receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, Holy be Holy Spirit. No quenching the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Again, this is some things we're revisiting as the church today that, that the birth church did that I think that needs to be brought back out. That needs to be stirred and released. And Peter said to them, of course, he said, repent. We talked about that. Be baptized. Each of you in the name of Christ Jesus because of forgiveness of your sins right here. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise of the Holy Spirit is for you. And get this. I've read this a thousand times. God forgive me. The Holy Spirit is for you and your children. And for all who are far away. So them as close and they're far away, as many as the Lord, our God, calls. The Holy Spirit's contagious if we just let him go. You know what I'm saying? But we try, we keep him in a box, and therefore he's hidden. And how can people see what you got and want what you got if you quench it? The Holy Spirit's contagious. It doesn't mean, listen, when I read about my children, I thought, God, if I say that, people are going to say, well, I can ride on mom and dad's coattail and be okay. 
or I can ride on Pastor Brian's, just, I, can, I can just attend Elkhorn Baptist Church and I'll be all right. But it doesn't mean that. It means that the fruit of the Holy Spirit is so contagious that they'll want what you got. More specifically, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You know, I, again, I'm 44 years old, grew up in a, in a non-denominational church, but we danced all around Acts. You know what I'm saying? Christina, my wife, gave me this word she shared, you know, and she, she heard it from another church, but it just spoke to her that we're okay with threefold gifts in the ministry, but not five sometimes. You know what I'm saying? We're okay with evangelism, preaching, and teaching, but what about the prophetic? What about the apostolic, what about the, the apostolic side of it? You know what I'm saying? So we're either all in or we're all out. Amen? So Acts chapter 1, verse 4 and 5, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And listen, Jesus is telling this to the apostles right straight from his mouth. He says, while being together and eating with them, he commanded them not to leave Jerusalem. Remember, I talked about it. We've got to be obedient. We, we can't say, I got it. He commanded them not to leave, and they didn't leave. And then they received, amen? So he commanded them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for what the Father had promised, of which he said, you have heard me speak for John baptized with water. Now, who's saying this? Jesus is saying this, so we can take it to the bank, amen? So there's more than a water baptism, amen? Jesus said it. John baptized you with water. But you, and I'm looking at every one of you, amen? Everyone, Facebook, I'm looking at you this morning. You, I love how, how this broke down here from, from the Greek. You will be baptized, you will be empowered, and you will be united with the Holy Spirit, not long from now. Amen? You'll be baptized, you'll be empowered, and you'll be united. Somebody say we need some unity right now. Amen? Look around our world. You don't have to look very far. Look, look in this house. Look at your neighbor across the aisle. We need some unity. And the enemies, again, fight like hell to separate us. Amen? But I, we, we, listen, we have authority over him. Man, he's under our feet. I take his thoughts captive, and I tell him to hell with them. Amen? Because we are unified in Jesus' name. I refuse to receive the lies of the enemy. But you'll be baptized, you'll be powered, and you'll be unified with the Holy Spirit. Come on, we're trucking. Action number three. Listen, we got to be devoted. I mean, it's not, it's not something we just take off when we get home and put it back on next Sunday. You know what I'm saying? We've got to be devoted. And specifically, well, let's just read it. Acts chapter 2, verse 42. Acts chapter 2, verse 42. They, talking about the church, and he's talking to you and I, about for us. They were continually and faithfully devoting themselves, meaning, get, meaning they gave all of themselves to the instructions of the apostles, and to, they gave all of themselves. They were continually and faithfully devoted to fellowship. And it says to eating meals, to breaking bread, and in prayers. The instructions of the apostles. What's an apostle? It's the messenger. It's the one sin appointed for that time. Amen. Brother Brian gives you a message every Sunday. Amen. God's, I, I told you earlier, why me, God? But God appointed me to give you a word today. So the instructions of the apostles, the word, what was this? The words of Jesus, his teachings, the testimonies of what they saw and they experienced. But not only that, but what, it, it was from preparation because God's not done. Amen, you have a plan and a purpose. And so I want to get you ready for what's to come because you're a part of it. Amen. But fellowship, fellowship. I, God gave me this word. I, I, did, Pastor Ditto gave me a word of where we're at right now. And I thought, what are we doing? And Pastor Ditto said, God said, just flip through your journal. I hadn't always journaled, but the last few years I have been. And as I flipped through there, God gave me a word of communion, community. How was it? Communion, communicate, and community. But fellowship is communication, communion, and community. It talks about the breaking of bread. Listen, we're the body of Christ. If we're not unified, who is? You know what I'm saying? And I think back about Ezekiel 37, about the bones coming together. And, and, and then before I got into this, I was sharing you about the callings, the body of Christ. That we know the head is Jesus Christ, 
But you, come on, you can have blood in your veins and everything in your body be in contact still be dead. You know what I'm saying? The body of the Christ is the same way. The head is trying to give us direction what to do, but without the flow of the Holy Spirit, the four winds from the corners in our body, without, what I'm saying is without breath, you're not alive. You know what I'm saying? And so with that, without breath, we're not unified. We're, we, may be, we may be together physically, looking out here, you look pretty good, but spiritually speaking, we got to have communication, community, and communion. And that, that leads us to the third point. It says they had meals together. One version says they broke the bread. Amen? But the Greek for the meals together was this, the breaking of the bread. Not only was they a part of fellowship, but they broke the bread, the bread of life, the Word of God. They broke the bread. I believe they had meals together. We're going to touch on that here in a minute. But they, brought, they did communion. Well, again, not only do we just speak it, but sometimes, many times, we just go through the actions, the motions. We know the Bible tells us how important it is. You better check yourself. Amen? I don't want to heap condemnation on me. But not only that, in our actions, the body of Christ broken for you. And as we do that, and we seriously take the blood, not just going through the actions, but receiving that all over again, the importance of it. And all this ties to, to action number four. They had all things in common. And I already, 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 already got my cart before the horse, but unity. Acts chapter two, verse 44. It says, all. The believers. All of the, there's not an us and they. Amen. It's not a you and I. You know what I'm saying? I, 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 I'm going to repeat myself again. The body, we're together. All the believers were together and had everything in common. Everything. And if you read that on down, it talks about you know, they sold their possessions. We look at it that way. But listen, everything. If you're hurting, I'm hurting. Amen. Amen. It, Thank you, Holy Ghost. If you're struggling in an area, I'm struggling. Amen? We got everything in common. And when we work together, amen, we'll overcome it. We will accomplish what God's will is. Amen? But they had everything in common. Verse 46 of Acts chapter 2. Now I'm spitting all over this paper. Oh, where's the tissue? I got, where's our tissue? All right, we're good. That's all right. Well, where's that, brother man? <laughs> Listen, I wouldn't have made a scene out of that, but I know y'all saw that. I had something drip from my nose. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm just being honest. I need that tissue. <laughs> All right. Acts chapter 2, verse 46. Sorry, Lord. Okay. <laughs> Acts chapter 2, verse 46. Every day. My God, when I read that, I thought, you wait till I say that. There'll be people get up and leave. Dylan, where are you going? <laughs> no, I'm just playing. <laughs> I'm just playing. Every day, it says, they continue to meet together in the temple. Come on, we're revisiting the early church, the things they did. I'm not saying, listen, I'm not saying I'm going to see y'all here tomorrow, okay? But it's the importance of the unity and the breaking the bread and, and the coming together. Every day, they continue to meet together in the temple courts. They broke the bread in their homes. They ate together with glad and sincere hearts. Together in the Greek, I love the concordance, number 1909, if you want to look it up. In the strongest concordance. It implies what fits. Talk about being together. My first thought was a puzzle. That how you and I should be so close when the world sees us, it sees a put together puzzle. But let's be honest. You know where I'm going with this. When the world sees a church, what does it see? It sees a couple parts put together, but a church disjointed and not put together. I mean, listen, again, you don't have to look very far. You don't have to look very far. So Philippians 2, 1 through 3, I love this. Because when I seen fit, I was reminded of a scripture. I had a shirt on the other day, Philippians 2. And I was reminded of this. Philippians 2, 1 through 3. Therefore... Now, listen, I'm talking to the body of Christ. If there is any encouragement, 
Come on, body of Christ. Any comfort in Christ, if there is any consolation of love, if there is any fellowship, listen, these are things we've been talking about, in the Spirit, if there is any affection and compassion, verse 2, make my joy complete by being of the same mind, having the same love toward one another. This is knit together in the Spirit. Listen, I've been putting a lot of emphasis on the Spirit this morning. We've quenched it long enough. Amen. It's time to get put together. It's time to be knitted together. Listen to this. Knit together in spirit, intent on one purpose. Do nothing for selfish gain or empty conceit. But with an attitude of humility. There's a humility word again. We got to let go. Amen. Amen. We got to let go of the hurt and the grudge. We got to humble ourselves. You know what? I can tell you I'll wash your feet, but will I do it? You know what I'm saying? Do nothing for selfish and empty conceit, but with an attitude of humility, regard others as more important than yourself. I can't serve you if I don't humble myself below you. I can't be Christ-like. Our very pattern, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, my Savior, took a towel. Knowing what was about to come, and sat at a table with flesh and bone, and said, I got to wash your feet. Our example. He got nailed to the cross for things that he never done in his life, never imagined his life. He probably got judged and got some said, things said to him that hurt his feelings. Amen. Amen. Amen? And Terry, I think about yesterday when I seen people packing that cross and that prayer walk. I'll never look at Independence Day the same again. And I have equated it for years. But as we walked as the church in unity with flags waving not only for our country but for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and a cross being drug around town I realize what my freedom cost. And not just as an American. Amen? Amen. But I also saw what my Savior did. And He's my example. So I had to repent. Because how many of us, and I, I'm no different than you are, hold on to baggage. Just waiting for the opportunity to pull it out. I dare you say something. Because I'm going to hang it over your head. But Jesus took it. And you and I don't like it, but we got to take it sometimes. Because bottom line, he has a plan and a purpose. That it may not feel like it now, but I'm going to be better. But most of all, he's going to be glorified. Right? Amen? He's going to be glorified. So, me, me as the church, as the body, and I've kind of already said this. Each of us have a part. We're knitted together. What did it say? Knitted together in spirit. In the spirit. So action number five. I love this one. They praise God continually. Continually. Again, it's not just a Sunday morning thing. It's not when you got Caleb blaring in your car. Continually. Acts 2, 47. Praising God continually. And get this. They was doing it. They was praising God continually. And what else? And they had favor with all people. And the Lord kept adding to the number daily those who were being saved. And I looked at this. The first thing, not only did they have favor, before they had favor, they, 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 people were being saved, they had favor, but back to number one, they were praising God continually. The Bible tells us in Proverbs that we, the death and life are in the power of the tongue. Amen. We also know the Bible says, out of your mouth, your heart speaks. So we can put those two together. Whatever's in your heart is fueling your tongue, giving it to the power to the words that you speak. So we know that bitter and sweet can't come from the same fountain. So if we're praising God, we got to have the good stuff in our heart. And that's hitting our tongue, and therefore we're speaking life. We're praising God. The words you speak is a form of praise. It's not just singing. Amen. It's not just dancing. It's life. Life. You should be praising God every day, every step. 
continually. And so what happens when we do that? We may think this not, but when we're doing that, we're, we're walking that way, living life that way, we have favor with all men. Because they're drawn to it. I said, oh, I'll go. The Holy Spirit is contagious. And listen, if, if somebody beside you is not saved, they can't deny the Holy Spirit is upon you and in you. Because conviction is pulling, is drawing. There's a drawing to it. And so, if we're continually praising God, and I said this, not just in song, but with the words of our mouth, our testimony, our lifestyle, our deeds, our works, you know, everything we do 24-7, you, you, you should be praising God in your sleep. You know what I'm saying? I, listen, I woke up many a time, the Spirit of God speaking to me. You know what I'm saying? But with that being said, in life, in your jobs, if you're praising God continually, you're going to draw all men. And what it say at the end of verse 47? And the Lord kept adding to the number daily. Come on, we're talking about the birthing of the church, some things we need to revisit. 3,000 people got saved. Why? Because man submitted. God told them to wait, and they waited. God said, you're going to receive? And they said, okay, God, you said it. I'll do it. They received. And then, excuse me, and then they were obedient. When God said, let it happen, the Holy Spirit fell, it drew the attention of everybody around them. I just read that. And what happened? 3,000 people got saved. Come on. Listen, we need to get out of church as the norm. I think, whether you think God caused COVID, or whether you think he allowed it, listen, God, God knew about it. He's God. Nothing took him by surprise. But he, let's take this opportunity, what, what Satan means for evil, and let's just realign. Amen. We're, we have the opportunity. We're in a new era. You know, I heard a word on this. It's not just a new season because seasons are tied together. But we're, we are in a new era. An era is a time that, that happens after something substantial happened, something significant happened. Well, something significant has happened, whether we like it or not. So let's take that and we're getting realignment. Amen. Let God be God. So let me read another scripture to you. We're talking about praising God continually. And I already told you this. With our mouth, being, praising God continually, the church will grow. So what does that look like for you and I? Psalms 34. Psalms 34, 1 and 3. So what does it look like? It says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. I already, again, I get ahead of myself, but we talked about that. What's in the heart, the mouth speak, what's in the heart? My soul makes boast of the Lord. There's that humble word again. God, what are you trying to show us? The humble and the downtrodden will hear it and rejoice. You see, you see the comparison here. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us lift his name together. So I think that verse ties pretty much what we've been talking about today. The togetherness, the unity. If we're praising him continually, he's going to draw all men. That's what it says there. The, the humble and drowned tod, trodden will hear it and rejoice. They're drawn. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us lift up his name. So I told you, y'all know me. This is the second or third message I preach. It goes fast. Amen. So listen, we're going to have the praise team come right now. Five things just out of Acts chapter one and two that I really felt God stirred me that we need to revisit as a church today. And we've, got, we've said it. We know we need these things. We're good at saying it. We're good at saying we're spirit-led. But we, 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 we hold him with our actions. The five things we need to revisit today was repentance, empowerment, and unity in the Holy Spirit, devotion and committed. Are we devoted and committed? Do we have community and unity? And of course, Praise and our songs and our testimony in our life, the goodness of God. That's going to draw all men into Him. All of which takes action. And I said, we've got, again, I've said it again. We've, we've, we've said this, we were good at saying it. But I'm just being honest with you, where I'm at, I, I'm finally at a place that you know what, God? Your will be done. Amen. I'm not going through the emotions no more. I want to be the church. I want to see revival. 
I want to see the great awakening. You know what I'm saying? I want to see the lame walk. I want to see 3,000 people get saved. And it's, it's not God's fault it's not happening. It's us. Amen. So we got to revisit. I challenge you. Revisit the book of Acts, all 28 chapters. I challenge you and I to be chapter 29. Amen. It's time for action. And I'm going to read one more scripture on that as Chris begins to play and, and listen. The altars are open. You can pray at your seat. If you're good, listen, I want you to pray for unity. I want you to pray for healing. Amen. I want you to pray for this, for the body, like you've never prayed before. That we get realigned. That we get these five things revisited. And, 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 and be the church. James chapter 2, verses 14 through 17. You know where I'm going with this. We're talking about putting our talk into action. We're talking about letting the Word of God, the Holy Spirit, live in us and act it out the way that we are to, to do that. It says, what good is it, my brothers and sisters? What good is it, church? If someone claims to have faith but has no deeds or works or action." And look at this. Can such faith save them? Verse 15. Suppose a brother or a sister is without clothes and food. And one of you, remember again, he's talking to the church. One of us. Come on. God forgive me because I've done it. If we say to him, go in peace. Keep warm and be fed, but does nothing about their physical needs. What good is it? You know, the Bible tells us without love, we, we can pray, we can prophesy, but without love, it's just, a, it's just a sounding symbol. It's just a noise. Without the action of love. But it says, go in peace, keep warm and be filled. What? We don't take care of nothing What good is it? In the same way, Faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by actions, I love the NIV translation on that. If it's not accompanied by actions, faith by itself without actions is dead. I didn't say that. I didn't write that. If you go on down, I, I, we're not going to read it today, but it says, you, you tell me you got faith, show me your actions. Amen? And, I, and I'm saying actions, not in acting. I'm talking about putting you know what I'm saying? Put your, what is it? Does your walkie-walkie match your talkie-talkie? You know what I'm saying? Put your money where your mouth is. Amen? Put your actions where your mouth is. And listen, I, and I, I say that. I realize my calling, again, and, I, and this has just been revelation in the last few years. Christine and I was just talking about this the other day. I, I received this, God. I'm to equip the church. You know what I'm saying? For the works. So I realized, God, now that I received that, this word is to equip you to win the lost. Amen. So it's invitation time, it's time for action. I thank God for the Holy Spirit and as it moves, because like I said earlier, the miraculous can happen. So when I say it's time for action and the Holy Spirit is here, Listen, you may be here and lost. You may be here and do not know Jesus Christ as your Savior. This may be the first time Facebook, you may be the first time you ever tuned in. And you're saying, what's this crazy guy even talking about? Today, I want to give you the opportunity to take action. Because, listen, I've said it. I'll get saved, that's just not right now. You know what I'm saying? I'll get saved, but later on down the road. But today... It's the day of salvation. The Holy Spirit is moving and drawing, and you can be saved. If the Holy Spirit is not present and not drawing, you can't just say, okay, I'll get saved today. But today, the Holy Spirit is very much present. And so today, I just want to invite you, before we go any farther, whether you're on Facebook or you're here in, here in house, if you're lost and undone, maybe you thought you were saved, but the Holy Spirit is speaking to you directly right now. Not Joey Hicks, but the Holy Spirit is speaking. Today is the day of your salvation. And so with that being said, just as eyes closed, 
Facebook, as you're tuning in you're, in your living room, your bedroom, wherever you may be, it's a symbol saying, God, I need you. Holy Spirit is speaking right now. God, I realize that I am lost. I thought I was good. I thought I was all right. But God, today I realize that I need to be saved. And I love how Jesus told Nicodemus, you need to be born again. All things made new. And so God, today I need that. So God, forgive me my sins. Jesus, I confess you. I believe you. God, I know you raised me from the dead. I repent of my sins. I turn from them right now in Jesus' name. Amen. The Bible says if you believe that, you, you confess that, you pray that, you're saved. So today is the day of your salvation. You took action. And today you're saved. And so, I know this is a little different. This morning, as you're seated, that's okay. If, if you got saved today, today's your day of salvation. I want to see your hand. I want you to confess to Him right now. I want you to confess it. Amen. If that's you, I don't see any hands. If that's you, before you go today, let me know it. Facebook, if that was you, send us a message on Facebook. Give us a call, the number, 789-2113. Leave us a message. We want to know. We want to celebrate with you. We want to grow you and empower you. But today, maybe... The words that we said, the things that we need to revisit. Listen, when I read this, I had to repent. And so today, I want to give you an opportunity. I know there's some on Facebook watching as well. You're saved, you're born again. But you've been trying to do it your way. Amen. You've been trying to do it man's way. The Bible tells us that God's way is much more above ours. So you need to let go. You need to repent. Listen, now is the time. Holy Spirit is working. And so, listen, I, I'm going to hush for a while. I'm let, I want Chris to just to take us into song. I want you to stand to your feet. We will give God this time. We will give Holy Spirit this time to minister like only He can. Now listen, this is something we don't talk about a lot. Baptism of the Holy Spirit. I want to give opportunity now for, for you, not necessarily to receive, but you to surrender all. Because the Bible says when we get saved, the Holy Spirit comes within us. And so it's not that I get more God. The Holy Spirit's in me. But I'm going to let go of everything. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to let go of it all and give it all to Him. And that's when baptism happens. You know what I'm saying? So this morning, right now, the altars are open. Listen, you don't have to come to this altar. You can pray at your seat. You can go to the sides if you're concerned about spacing. But I want you to block out what the enemy's trying to put in and just release yourself to God right now through the Holy Spirit. So right now, God, I just want to pray. Lord, this is your time. As Chris and the team gets ready to worship, God, we release everything right now. God, we bind the enemy. We curse fear. We curse doubt. And we, we just cut him off in this time because this is Holy Spirit time. God, you're going to minister. God, I'm expecting for the miraculous. God, I thank you for the souls that's being saved and the lives that's being changed right now. God, I thank you for the healings, for the deliverances. God, for the renewings of the mind right now. I thank you, God, for the baptism of the Holy Spirit it's going to happen right now. We release you, God. And we bind the enemy right now. So God, I'm just going to shut my mouth. And you're going to speak louder than I ever could right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oh, things have passed away.